Well, shalom, everybody. Listen, uh, welcome to uh, Fresh Impact Christian Center and this uh, teaching. Uh, I assume if you're watching this teaching that one of three things has happened. Either you have become a part of our great fellowship for the first time um, and you've given your life to Jesus Christ and decided to dedicate that life to Jesus Christ to become all you can be. Or uh, maybe you're new to the city or new to the area and you've decided to become a part of our local campus here. Or uh, maybe you um, have uh, rededicated your life to Jesus Christ and you want to uh, launch it off in the right way to maximize your greatest potential in Him. And listen, one of the greatest oppositions that we face whenever we make any new decision, whether it's to start a marriage or a business or a new life of any sort, whenever we're on a new journey or a new venture, we always wrestle with what's next. What do I do next? And that question can literally leave some, you know, some people plagued and lacking because if you uh, start a business and you don't know how to market it or you start a situation, you don't know how to really uh, uh, go to the next level or do the next thing, then it really becomes a complicated process. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is give you five simple steps of what you need to do uh, to get your uh, spiritual career, I'd like to call it, off to a great start so that you can maximize your greatest potential here at Fresh Impact and you can be a part of this great vision uh, that we have to literally take this city, uh, 1% of this city by storm. And I, I'll explain that in later videos about what that means to you. But listen, let's pray first. Father, in the name of Jesus, we command uh, the atmosphere now. Our attentiveness is yours. We lend ourselves to you and thank you for just your power and your presence and even your provision in our lives to bring us from the place of our past to the place of our present and direct us to the promises of our future. Now in the name of Jesus, as we delve off into your word and we extrapolate the uh, necessities of life, uh, we pray today, God, that we would walk, talk, hear, and be and become more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. All right, listen, if you have a Bible, go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. I want to read some things to you, and I want to talk to you about these five simple steps that you need to employ uh, for what's next. Because, if again, if you're watching this, um, it is your it, it should be your goal to move from just being a part of the crowd uh, and a part of the congregation to be a part of what's called our core, Christians on a Renewed Effort. And that effort is to maximize the kingdom and to be the best that you could be to where you ultimately and literally begin living a life of impact. And I'll talk to you about that later again, those 10 areas in your life where you should be experiencing impact every single day. God designed you for that type of success. In Ephesians 2, uh, you should have it. If you don't, you know, get a Bible, get somewhere quiet, get a pen and some paper, and let's get started, all right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, uh, and I'm reading out of the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, and you... Uh, he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins. Verse two says, in which you walked, you were following the ways of the world influenced by this present age in accordance with the prince of power of the air, Satan, the spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving, who fight against the purposes of God. The first thing you've got to understand before we get into the five things of what's next is that your life was born with a purpose, that God created you with a purpose, and that purpose can be really found, write this down, in Genesis 1 and 26. It says, and let us make man after our image and after our likeness, and and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. That word dominion in the Hebrew literally means that God created you to dominate your atmosphere. God never intended on you uh, living beneath your means. He always wanted you to experience the maximum of your potential in everything that you touch or put your hands on. And so now that you're made new again and alive again in Christ Jesus, one of the things that comes with that is the favor of God. Look at back, back at Ephesians uh, in verse uh, 8 of the same chapter uh, uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, for by grace 
uh, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God. Watch this now. Not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his or her salvation. For we are his workmanship, his masterwork, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used. Glory to God. The reason why I like that so much is because what it really says is that the favor of God now extends itself to you. It is chiris in the Greek. It is where God does for you the things that you dare, that you can't even dare or begin to do for yourself. But one thing he does is he eliminates the fact that we've got to work for it, but we work because of it. Because one of the things you got to understand as he talks about purpose in this passage is that God didn't save you from something. He saved you for something. Every person that's watching this video video today has a divine purpose on your life and a great call on your life and a great assignment on your life. And it's our job here at Fresh Impact, being a part of a local church, having a pastor, according to Jeremiah chapter three, write that down, verse 15 says, and I give you pastors after my own heart who can feed you with knowledge and understanding. It is my job to help uncover uh, your greatest gifts and your talents and your abilities. And it's your job to make those talents, gifts, and abilities available for kingdom assignment so that you can begin to work. You ought to holler what's next. Glory to God. And so whether you made this decision or not today to become a Christian or whether you're renewing your relationship with Christ or renewing your vows, I really want to congratulate you for having the courage to literally make that decision. But I want you to also understand that there are five expectations that God uh, lays as the foundation premise for what it is you've got to do now that you have made this wonderful decision. Say what's next with me. All right. All right. Number one, let's talk about it. What's next? The first thing that God expects from you because he saved you because he needs to unveil and uncover your purpose is that you make yourself available for teaching. And that only comes through number one, write this down, faithful church attendance. All right. You have got to attend the house of the Lord on a faithful basis. And there are a couple of scriptures I want you to write down so that you can understand this. Write down Hebrews 10 and 25. It says not forsaking the assembling as in the manner of some. That one of the things it says, you know, that you can't can't forsake the assembling of coming together to literally be taught the word. At Fresh Impact, there are at least three, three services that you really need to be mindful of that are going to bless your life in a unbelievable way and begin to, uh, as I said, uncover and unveil those gifts that are in your life and train and teach and develop you to become the greatest version of yourself that you can become. Number one, that's Sunday morning. Sunday morning worship is one of the most critical services. It is the first day of the week. It is your greatest gift to God. It is God's day. It's the day you set aside for his service. And there should be nothing that you allow. Don't even allow work. If you're working somewhere now, you begin to immediately pray for that favor of God, that God is going to give you the favor, even among your employers, to give you the opportunity to be able to be at church on Sunday. Why? Because you never put work before worship. Remember, in the Bible, according to the book of Genesis, work was designed ultimately to be a penalty for man's transgressions. And so that you no longer live within the penalty, you have to operate within your priority. And that priority is putting worship now before work. Glory to God. That was the mistake that Adam made. Remember, Adam missed worship. He missed showing up for God in the cool of the day. And then ultimately, as a result of it or a penalty of it, he end up having to work. So what you've got to do is come to the place now where you understand that Sunday morning service is paramount. It's at 1030 a.m. every Sunday morning, and it is absolutely paramount. Now, if you want to really maximize your growth possibilities, if you want to put yourself in the greatest position to achieve the greatest things for the kingdom and to do the greatest work and fulfill your assignment to your family, to your faith, to your friends, to your finances, 
circumstances, and yes, even to your foes, because believe it or not, you have an assignment in your enemy's life, and they have an assignment in yours. The, the, the second thing you want to write down is what's called our deep thoughts development. Deep thoughts development, all right, happens at uh, 8.30 every Sunday morning. It's from 8.30 to 9.30. Uh, uh, actually, it starts at 8.45. I apologize. 8.45 to 9.30. And we, we have family breakfast after that. So you don't even have to worry about stopping to eat or to feed the kids or whatever. We provide all of that for you for free. There's no charge for it. All you're doing is coming out and you're getting deposited in by the man of God, your pastor, uh, that next level of teaching, that next level of training that we really deal with some intricacies that are necessary to your kingdom uh, assignment, all right? The third uh, service that you want to write down that's absolutely important is our Bible study, all right? Our Bible study is on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Now, uh, because of uh, the creative nature in which we operate and our desire to have impact throughout the world, sometimes we have our Bible study literally for a month on what's called telephonic Bible study. We have it over the telephone, and then we have our local Bible study in person, all right? Uh, as we're continuing to enhance and grow, that may change, but whatever it is, that Wednesday hour is dedicated to you and God. Bible study is 90, a 90-minute 90 empowerment development. It's from uh, 7 to 8.30, and then we're done, all right? Uh, so you want to set aside at least that amount of time for Bible study and not forsake the assembling of the brother. And why? The Bible says in Acts 2, 42 and 40 uh, through 47, it says, then they continued steadfastly in uh, devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles, fellowship, uh, breaking of bread and of prayer. All right. They continue steadfastly. They continue faithfully. You have got to faithfully make yourself available for the deposit of God's word in your life so that you can get instructions from God to be the best you you can be. If the word of God says in Psalms 37 and 23, write that down. I always tell you to write something down because I want you to verify that I'm teaching you the truth from the word of God, not just make Making up something as I go, all right? So uh, Psalms 37, 23 talks about the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And the orders of the Lord uh, are his instructions. His instructions is in his word. The way you discover the orders of God is through revelation. And the way you discover revelation is you got to have a revelator. Romans 10 says, and how shall they hear? Uh, without a preacher. If you don't, you'll, uh, Romans 10 and 1 says you'll go about to establish your own righteousness and really have not submitted yourself to the righteousness of God. In a relationship of love, you always want to know how to love that person according to their terms. And one of the great terms of God, to love God the way he wants to be loved, is that we make sure that we don't forsake attending church. So we have to faithfully attend the fellowship of God. That's step number one, all right? What's next? Say that with me. What's next, all right? Number two, the second thing you want to do is you need to faithfully serve in church. Now, I know you may not be a singer, you may not be a preacher, you may not be a pastor, or you very well may be. Whatever your talents, gifts, or abilities are, every single person in the body of Christ has the great privilege of the call of service on their lives. I say a privilege because serving is not a right. You don't have a right to serve. It is a great privilege to serve. And to serve God the way he wants to be served, you've got to surrender your body, the Bible says, as a living sacrifice. Romans 12 and 1 and verse 2, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Jesus said it this way, I didn't come to serve, but to, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. Every person has a ability that you can bring to the kingdom. I don't care if it's your smile and your gift may be just standing at the door saying, welcome to Fresh Impact. I'm so delighted to have you today. And you make people feel good. Maybe it's to be an adjutant and to help the man of God. Maybe it's to be on our security team and work in our parking lot. Maybe it's to be uh, uh, to use your clerical or computer skills or your musical skills. It may not be singing, but maybe you'd like to work in our sound booth or our technical side. Maybe you'd like to work our video side. I don't know, but whatever it is, you have a 
a talent, a gift, or ability, if it's working with children, uh, developing a singles ministry, or whatever, that can be used uh, in, this, in, in service by God. Going through this particular training begins to set the stage for that because you've went through all of the prerequisite process that you need to go through to put yourself in the best position so that you could be used by God. But one of the things you've got to do is you've got to faithfully serve in the church. When I was growing up, they had a saying, and they would say, you know, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And I never really knew what that meant as a kid growing up. But as an adult, I begin to understand that when you're idle, God doesn't want you to be a spectator. He wants you to be a participator. My grandfather used to say, God don't want you to rust out. He wants you to wear out. And so when you're idle uh, because you don't, uh, you're not doing anything, it opens the door for the enemy to unlock and unleash all of the tactics, schemes, tricks, and uh, you know, uh, diabolical plots that he has on your life. And you don't want that in your life. So what you want to do is find your niche. I tell you, you know, we, uh, that's one of the, that's a great business term. We, you know, uh, they say, uh, you know, in business and in real estate, you know, when a person tries to just do everything, they haven't found their niche. And when you don't find your niche, you're kind of all over the place. Find your niche in church, what your niche is, your serving niche and serve, but don't sit there and do nothing. And if you're having a difficult time being able to identify that yourself, it's okay. We're going to invite you to take a spiritual gift assessment. After you take that spiritual gift assessment, you're going to have a meeting with one of my elders, and we're going to begin to set you in place to begin to unlock your greatest gifts, all right? And to literally direct you where you need to go. You want the input of the man of God and the leadership of the church as to where you should be working so that you can maximize your greatest potential, all right? Number three, um, decide what doesn't come with you in your new life with Christ. What do you mean decide what doesn't come with me? Beloved, it. Listen, there are some things the Bible says we got to lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us. Hebrews 12. All right. And there are some things in your life that literally can't come with you. They just can't come with you. There's some people that can't come with you. There's some situations that can't come with you. There's some problems that can't come with you. But nevertheless, you've got to decide what doesn't come with you into your new life with Christ. Old things have passed away. The Bible says, behold, all things have become new. You have got to realize that even if you can't give it up today, it's got to be a part of your overall long-term plan that there are some things you know you've got to give up and you want to begin working on them, okay? All right, so don't, don't panic. Don't flip out. Well, I'm not ready yet. Then if I can't, no. Let's begin the process of working something in you so that you can then work something up out of you, all right? Number five, what's next, all right? Number one, you faithfully attend church, faithful church attendance. Number two, faithful in serving the church. Number three, decide what doesn't come with you in your new life in Christ. Number four, have prayer and Bible reading every day for at least 10 minutes, all right? Now, I want to tell you where to start. There are one or two places you can start. I'm going to let you decide. But you need to start in one of these two places. Number one, here's my preference. You know what? Let me pastor you. Let me lead you. I'm going to tell you where to start, all right? The first place I want you to start at in your new journey with Christ is I want you to try and attempt to read a chapter of Proverbs every day for the next 30 days. All right. I want you to try to read a chapter of Proverbs for the next 30 days every day. I want you to email me at impact the number seven life at gmail.com and ask me, Pastor, what's step number two? All right. I want you to read one chapter of Proverbs every day and just say a quick prayer. If you don't have know how to pray, it's okay. I'll send you a written prayer. Just email me at impact the number seven life at gmail.com. Say, Pastor, uh, I'm one of your new uh, family members and I need a written prayer. I need to learn how to pray. Okay. We're going to make this easy for you. We're going to make it work for you. All right. So I want you to concentrate on at least 10 minutes a day. It shouldn't take you no more than 10 minutes to read one chapter and then to say a quick prayer. And that's how you go. All right. Finally, 
What's next? Decide to grow closer to God. Listen, you made a great decision to join the church. You made a great decision to allow me to be your pastor, but you've got to decide to grow. You cannot stay in the place that you're in and get the results in life that you're looking for. You've heard the great colloquial state, uh, statement uh, that is insanity to keep doing what you're doing and expect a different result. If you're not getting the results that you've been wanting in life, in business, in relationships, in family, in your physical man, and certainly not in your spiritual man, then you've come to the right church because that's what we do. We're about impacting lives, all right? Uh, we're the place that loves to engage in impacting lives. So listen, I need you to make sure you make that final decision that you're going to grow. And listen, after that, the journey becomes so much more pleasant. Why? Because I'm going to teach you three things that you'll hear me say all the time. I'm going to teach you how to live. I'm going to teach you how to love. I'm going to teach you how to laugh, and I'm going to teach you how to matter, all right? That's four things, I'm sorry. To live, love, laugh, and matter. I'm out. Uh, we'll be back to get you part two of this, to keep you on your journey toward growth, and I look forward to teaching you these principles and being your pastor. I love you. God loves you best. I want you to remember, live, laugh, love, and matter. This is Bishop Thomas. I'm out.